Deep in the Amazon rainforest lies some of nature's most valuable treasure. Beneath the mountains of the Serra dos Carajas, the earth is rich. But before those riches could be exploited, man had to conquer the jungle. And he did, changing the face of the land forever. The dense bush gave way to large buildings where mining equipment is kept, and to silos which today hold a harvest of mineral plenty. But the earth was left raw and wounded in the quest for the deposits of the Serra dos Carajas, which may well be the richest iron ore ever discovered. The remarkable discovery was an accident. In 1967, Brazilian and American prospectors were searching for manganese in the wild, uninhabited north. But one look at the heavy red gravel, and they knew they'd struck pay dirt, an iron mountain. Reserves are set at 18 billion tons, and experts believe that the heavy machines have only just begun to scratch the surface. The Carajas mining project was conceived in the late 1970s to help pay off Brazil's foreign debt, which at $110 billion is the largest in the third world. In total, $4 billion has been spent developing the mine. At times, it seemed a risky venture. First, a partner, US Steel, pulled out, and then the price of metals began tumbling worldwide. But Carajas kept its production costs low, and the gamble paid off. Today, Japan, West Germany, and the US are important customers. Like worker ants, the miners labor against a lunar landscape, forcing the earth to yield its precious store. All mining is dangerous and dirty work, and Carajas is no exception. But because the ore is so close to the surface, little blasting is needed, and the workers run fewer risks. Because of the remote location of the Carajas project, the state-owned company operating it had to offer the miners a self-contained community. All in all, it's not a bad life. A car in every garage and a lush, wild garden. Twenty thousand miners live here, six thousand fewer than six years ago, when cutbacks were started to increase profits. But when the Amazon Basin became home to the miners and their families, some others who traditionally call the jungle home were pushed out in the name of technological progress. The Amazon is one of the last natural havens for many exotic creatures. Ecologists worried about the future of the region have been critical of the Carajas project and the company that runs it, Rio Doce. But the company insists it's done everything possible to preserve the flora and fauna of the jungle, as well as its inhabitants. Not far from the minefields, the company built a game reserve and very carefully moved the big cats. And where the leopards went, entire flocks of birds followed. They too were unable to live in their old territory after the trees had been felled and the earth stripped bare. But no artificial home can ever mimic nature completely. For their own protection, some of the reserve's more colorful and rare occupants are sentenced to a life behind bars. The animals are not the only ones who've been displaced by the mighty hand of industry. The Kaviao Indians were once known as hunters and gatherers. Now they're known as the capitalist Indians. The Kaviao tribe received a million and a half dollars in compensation for being moved to a new reservation. But their newfound wealth threatens to spoil them with Western consumer goods, although they are trying to hold on to traditions like the fish dancing rite. And while the Indians adjust to their new life, a modern rail link runs over their former homesteads, carrying ore to the coast 500 miles away. Meanwhile, the big machines prowl the terrace surface of the Serra dos Carajas. At $4 billion, the price of taming the jungle has been high. The price paid by the animals and the Indians may be even more.